Hello, um, my name is Chris Adams, and I'm talking about OMGDPR. Um, but first of all, uh, there's been a bit of an introduction, but I feel that when I'm speaking to an IoT kind of audience, I should kind of explain why the hell I'm up here, right? Uh, this is me. I'm Mr. My name is Chris Adams. Chris Adams was taken on Twitter, so I'm now Mr. Chris Adams, because that was easier to kind of, there was still space. Um, I work for a company called Product Science, and I basically do product management, user experience, and coding for stuff. Um, I'm just going to give you a bit of a background on what I used to do with IoT stuff. Uh, all the way back to 2005, all right? Has anyone heard of the phrase participatory panopticon here? Didn't think so, all right? Proper academic kind of stuff. I did a media degree, and it turns out that media degrees are actually kind of quite handy at times. And uh, this quote here by Jamais Cachot, Cass uh, when I read this, I kind of feel it's not a million miles away from where we are right now, right? So this idea of us kind of like sleepwalking into this sense of constantly things being under surveillance, but we're doing it because individually these are kind of good ideas, uh, or these are useful things. Now, I was a media, I, I was studied, doing media studies, and uh, I thought, well, this is an interesting idea. Maybe I should explore it uh, in my undergraduate. So I'm just going to have two text-heavy slides, and the rest will be easy. It'll, be, it'll get much kind of more live, lively from this, I promise. So I thought, well, okay, for my final year project as an undergrad, I'll do this. I'll come up with a fictional business to talk about this as a kind of comment around startup culture. We'll call it grassroots, uh, uh, mainly because it's a pun, and if you're English, you tend to use puns a lot. And you'll make like um, a kind of network device to put in cars, because cars are kind of interesting kind of, uh, kind of symbol for freedom when people don't think about themselves so much. And then uh, I'll try, try, try to create some kind of morally dubious but legal business model to make it sound like it's world changing and like, you know, we're changing the world, man. And uh, that was the idea. And uh, I basically started building this uh, with, a, with, with a friend. So this is a Linux box. Um, that's it running on a cigarette lighter that goes in a car. This is like a cheap 15 pound webcam that I got from a phone shop around the corner. And this here is a, like, a USB dongle. And the idea was, well, okay, let's see, what can I do like 10 years ago? And I basically put it in my mum's car because my mum drives more than I do. And uh, I was driving in a, in a part of town, or we, we lived in a part of town which had quite high crime. So generally, if, if you're gonna get into a kind of case of road rage, they're probably gonna be bigger than you. And you, you, know, you, you're not, you don't wanna have a kind of confrontation. So we thought, well, maybe there's a chance to have, um, have another way of kind of, kind of evening the score really. So I, we basically built this, put it in the car, running on the cigarette lighter. You'll see this, like, this thing here, this is a guitar pedal that we basically split uh, and then run it into there. And the idea was, when you're driving along, if someone cuts you up, does some kind of like transgressive thing which is bad, rather than scream at them or anything like that, you basically have revenge uh, by just hitting this button. You pull over and you hit it a lot. And that will get rid of all the frustration. And what you have inside here, you've got a kind of little ring buffer recording everything that happened in front of you. You've got a GPS dongle which is tracking when, where and how that almost happened. And then when you get home, the, the Wi-Fi thing just uploads that video to the cloud. And the great thing about cars, Cars are like a really, really, really good... Uh, cars have these foreign keys on the back called number plates, which make it really, really easy to kind of identify who just almost hit you. And the idea was that you want to create some kind of like dubious but kind of mostly legal business model. And the idea was we figured, well, if you could just have a stream of this being made available to, say, insurance companies, and you could get a kind of cheaper rate on your own insurance by having this, then you kind of create this interesting participatory panopticon. So this is like a way of actually talking about this. But... This is also kind of a terrible thing to do, right? Because everyone thinks they're above average and you have all these kind of other dystopian side effects. Hence, and like, you know, media degrees are fun sometimes. So the thing that we ended up doing was, I thought this is an awful idea. So has anyone heard of the phrase prior art when you're trying to patent things? Okay, so prior, if something has prior art, you cannot patent it. You cannot do anything with it. So I thought, well, this is an awful thing and the world doesn't want this. So I'm gonna show it in an art gallery. So it's literally prior art. And like that was the kind of that was my kind of like way in for IoT really, and uh, well I kind of thought this is kind of interesting, and uh, this that's kind of my my way into thinking about I guess how data can be used in ways we don't initially think of, and uh, I'm just going to run through GDPR because oh I, I should have checked with Kathleen about what she's going to be covering, I find GD I find GDPR quite hard to get your head around, but there's a group called the Co-op in London in in the UK. And what they've done is they've created some really, really nice posters explaining what it's m m really about. And I'm just going to run through those quite fast, a maybe a bajillion miles per hour. So there's also a tweet. If you follow the link, this, this, slide, this deck is online. But uh, there's some really, really, th these are really, really nice ways to make this stuff un understandable. So one of them is, okay, you, you need to have a right to be able to review your own data, right? 
okay, for free of charge. And people, can't, people can't charge you for this. Another thing is to be informed. You know, I want to be able to consent to what's happening. You know, uh, things which I'm not comfortable about, I should at least be able to know and be able to say no to something. The right to be forgotten. So the organization has to delete this. Now, if, you, if you're on a blockchain, great, right? So because uh, if, you, if, if you've got something which cannot be changed and this thing means you have to change it, then, well, that's going to be an interesting discussion. Elsewhere, like uh, the right to move your data. This is the data portability stuff, right? I can, data portability doesn't mean too much to my friends who aren't technical, but move your data, that feels a bit... I know it's basically the same thing, right? But they kind of get it a bit better. And uh, the right to say no, like, I, f I don't want to people to do these things with me. And the fact that you can say no to that, kind of useful, right? And then also to limit how data is being used. It's like, this is really nice work, I feel, because, well, it's good typography and everything, but there, this is the kind of thing you can stick on a poster. And this is literally what they have. Like, you can download a PDF of all these posters to stick up around your office uh, so that you get to say, oh, okay, this is what we're doing, rather than we're enacting Article 55 of the yada, 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 and, and people glaze over. All right, so I'd really recommend looking through this. And there's the other one here, make changes to your data. This is quite important. This is basically, if someone's making decisions about you on incorrect data, then you can basically legally make sure it's changed. So it's actually, uh, so, so it reflects what's really happening. And then the final one is, yes, the right to human-made decision-making. So this is, oh, I should be looking at here, shouldn't I? Oh no, there's nothing here. So this is the other thing which is also really, really interesting, the idea of human-made decision-making. So automated things, which where we're kind of moving into more, then uh, this is the fact that you can actually opt out of that. Interesting idea. So all this stuff seems reasonable, right? Yeah, like we, we're, we're totally doing all this stuff already. I mean, why wouldn't we, do, we be doing this? Um, are we doing this? Oh, what if we're not, right? Like uh, these sound like re reasonable ideas. But the thing about GDPR is that it's kind of got some teeth to it as well. And like, I know I'm doing a bit of a kind of scare thing here, right? But if you're not doing this stuff, if you're saying no, uh, if you're found in like in breach of this stuff, Essentially, you can be fined up to 4% of global turnover uh, or 20 million euros, uh, up to 20 million euros. So this is the kind of thing which is like an existential threat to most companies. Like uh, you don't need to be hit too, too many times for 4% of global turnover. Imagine how many times Uber would have been hit by this last year, right? Like it's kind of, a, this stuff is actually has teeth. And the thing about Europeans, as Kathleen mentioned, is that, well, okay, who, who was not born in Europe uh, here? Okay. So we move around, yeah? So, uh, and also the thing that this applies to, this applies to basically anyone who is European. And I don't know about you, but it's really, really hard to keep Europeans out of data sets, you know, because like we, we tend to move around, like uh, in the same way that we've got people who are not from Europe and over here. And uh, that means that I feel like these are gonna end up being kind of the defaults globally because it just feels like it's gonna have to be that way because how are you gonna check, right? It's not like we have radioactive markers inside us or, or anything. So that's, that's what I think is interesting. And I kind of feel that this is going to change the, the kind of environment which tech operates in the same way that kind of an asteroid changed the environment in the Cretaceous area for dinosaurs, right? So there's going to be lots and lots of changes, but there are also going to be some more kind of human-friendly changes. Because when this thing hit, yeah, it got, rid of us, it got rid of dinosaurs, but it also made life much, much easier for mammals like us. And uh, this is kind of the IoT mark thing. I think that this does allow for companies or people who want to kind of do build like build things the right way to do this. Now I'm pointing to this stuff here because this was actually a workshop that took place maybe a couple of weeks ago to talk about how are you going to do this stuff and uh, it's basically continuing this IoT mark. The idea is that and um, where, where IoT mark is going to now is how do you build kind of I guess human friendly connected products in a way that are sustainable and all that and and treat data in a kind of like sensible fashion and what we found is when we were looking through this we just saw that GDPR was covering loads and loads and loads of it. So I think it's interesting. And we ended up like basically building out this, this kind of map of like what, what you might actually have for IoT, uh, for a kind of trust mark for this. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I just wanted to kind of refer to the person who mentioned it because it was a cool thing. And I really, really, I'm really quite excited about this, about this project. Anyway, so I've spoken a bit about GDPR, how it's kind of life changing, or at least it will have some really relatively seismic changes. Hence, OMGDPR. So I basically did this a few weeks ago to put together like a type form saying, hey, I think this is interesting. And uh, I wonder if anyone else does. So I put together a form, like, do you know about GDPR? Like from what's GDPR to we wrote red, red legislation and lobbied it to make, lo lo lobbied to make sure the legislation looks like our legislation, because this is the kind of thing that I think we actually be thinking about. And that there are some people who have been doing things like that. 
And I asked her, like, okay, how much do you think it's going to affect your business from nothing to it's going to have everything on fire? And, like, basically, so most people aren't really looking at too much, but some people are very, very involved. No one mentioned about the whole kind of lobbying thing, but you see that there is something happening here. And uh, when I looked at this, most people are thinking, yeah, it, it's going to have some effect and it's probably going to have more of an effect. And uh, I figured, well, if we have complicated things like this, where things are kind of a little bit unclear, I mean, if you ask a lawyer, like, what are we going to do about this? Lawyers themselves will say, we don't know yet, because in many cases you need to wait for someone to be sued to set up that precedent. And then you can say, yeah, well, don't do what he did because he got sued, right? So in, at the moment, there is a kind of sense of, like, un, I guess, what's, you know, uncertainty around this. And when you have kind of uncertainty in an area, then there are, there are tools and techniques we have to actually navigate that as organizations or as, or as groups. And uh, one of these techniques is called open space. So open space is a format for running events, and this is the thing that uh, OMGDPR is basically about. Um, has anyone heard of open space here? Yes, we have one person. You're my favorite person today. Okay, so the idea behind this in gigantic letters is rather than having people at the, t at the front being the kind of experts, you come along with somebody you'd like to talk about. And the chances are there'll be other people who also have something useful to share to talk about this. And then like you're discussing groups and you'll share stuff back. So it's very much kind of like an unconference thing from the bottom up. Um, I've got some photos to make it easier to understand. So this is a one called GovCamp, which is basically people in the UK trying to do this for making public sector work better with digital. And uh, people come along and say, hey, I want to talk about this. Or, hey, I want to talk about this. And then this poor guy here, I, t I think I forget his name, actually. I think it's, I, yeah, I forget his name totally. Um, he's never going to speak to me ever again, is he? Anyway, so you pitch an idea, and then you basically put together a kind of unconference schedule of what you might want to talk about. So I want to talk about the UX of consent. I want to talk about GDPR in, in IoT, and so on. And then you basically go to, and you go to these rooms, and you talk about these things. And you are, I think women are allowed, although you wouldn't know from that photo. And I think you're also allowed to take your backpack off. Uh, but, but generally, like... You're kind of like someone there will actually kind of make notes of what they get, what they talk about. And then later on, they'll, they'll talk about, they'll summarize the conversation they had. And you'll have a valuable conversation, find that you're not the only person worrying about this thing. And you can compare notes. It's a bit like being at school, I suppose, when you kind of, you know, you, you check your answers from the exam and then you learn a bit more like, like, like each other. Or at least don't feel so lonely. All right. But that's the kind of idea behind open space. It's a kind of bottom up on conference thing, which is driven by the community, because usually there's a lot more information in all the people than just two or three people at the front talking about this stuff. So where are we going to do this? Um, SoundCloud. Thank you. Thank you, SoundCloud. We're using their space uh, because people know where it is and uh, because they were, they were providing all the drinks and also uh, they've got loads and loads, and loads of space for us to have kind of like breakout rooms if you want to talk about this. So the idea is that once you've said, oh, we want to talk about all these things, you can kind of go somewhere quietly in your group of five or six people to talk about one particular thing and then you come back. And up here, this is where SoundCloud, that kind of space is where they do their kind of all hands meetings for all the hundreds of people who still work at SoundCloud, right? So there's, 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 there's definitely like, there's groups there and, you, and this, that's the idea. Like we talk about this, go up here and then we'll share the things. And then afterwards, well, basically I've got a few tables booked at the Brewdog because it's a nice bar and they do good pizza and they have uh, like a decent sized garden. So that's the thing, it's totally free. I think it's an interesting idea. I hope some of you will come along because I kind of feel like there is all this change happening and we're not really talking about it. And lots of people are saying, what's GDPR? And it's like, it's only like well, how many weeks away? It's not very far away. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for listening to me hector you and talk at you. That is the link on Bitly. Uh, that's me on Twitter. If you want to hire me to help you think about your stuff, like product strategy or build things, then that's where you'd go. And I think I've totally gone over 15 minutes. I'm so sorry. And I'll happily take questions. So cheers. Cheers, folks. Cool.